Good morning and welcome to Light Reflections from First Friends. We are glad you have chosen to join us for this virtual worship service and hope you find it beneficial to your spiritual journey. We consider this an abbreviated version of our in-person meeting for worship for those wishing to join us from a distance. If this is your first time joining us, First Friends is a thriving, progressive Quaker meeting in the city of Indianapolis, Indiana. We consider ourselves a loving, inclusive, joyous gathering of people seeking to know truth under the leadership of God's Spirit. All are welcome, no matter race, age, cultural background, sexual orientation and identity, marital status, physical and mental ability, family structure, or economic circumstance. Our hope is that through this worship experience, you will discover our faith community is unlike any other, where silent meditation is as important as the spoken word, where we emphasize the importance of one's personal encounter with the divine, and where we seek to support one another as we discover truth together. Now we invite you to center down and enter this virtual worship space with us. Here's a kid's song for today. Now we're used to singing the words a little bit differently, uh, but this morning we're going to sing, we've got the whole world in our hands because we are stewards of the earth and everything around us. So let's try that. We've got the whole world in our hands. We've got the whole about this we've got the trees and the forest in our hands we got the trees and the forest in our hands we got the trees and the forest in our hands we got the whole world in our hands we got the skies and the clouds in our hands we got the skies and the clouds in our hands we got the skies and the clouds in our hands we got the whole world we got the rivers and the seas in our hands. We got the rivers and the seas in our hands. We got the rivers and the seas in our hands. We got the whole world in our hands. Even the garbage, yeah. We've got the garbage and the trash in our hands. We got the garbage and the trash in our hands. We got the garbage and the trash in our hands. We got the whole world in his hands. Whole world. We got the whole world in our hands. 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 Good morning, friends, and welcome to Light Reflections. Today at the Meeting House, we are gathering outside in these meditational woods as it's Labor Day weekend, and because we had to move some of our festivities from Fun Day Sunday due to rain. I hope if you're watching this on your phone or your laptop, you'll find a way to step outside to watch this video. I think by doing this, it will have more meaning for you. Our scripture for today is from Job 37, 14 to 16 and I'll be reading it from the voice translation. The text is part of the conversation with Job where Elihu asked Job to pause and take in the nature to see God's purposes in the world. Elihu says, hear this Job, pause where you are and ponder the wonders of God. Do you know how God orchestrates these marbles? How he makes the clouds flash with lightning? Do you know how these same clouds are hung up in the sky or how they move? Do you know the wonders of God? Who is perfect in his knowledge of such things? Well, last week I preached on the query, what is your why? And we also looked at the Japanese term ikigai, which translated means a reason for being. I said the inspiration was best sermon the week prior on the difference between passion and obsessions. I believe exploring our why is a first step in looking at our passions. And this week, since we are out in nature and in a different setting, I want us, like Job in our text, to be encouraged to pause, 
where we are and ponder the wonders of God and to realize the importance of getting a new perspective on helping us explore our passions, beliefs, and purposes. Just being in the meditational woods or an outdoor setting can provide for us a new perspective this morning. Most of us at First Friends live in an urban environment instead of a rural one, and technology or our jobs keeps us indoors most of the time. This means we're simply less healthy due to our withdrawal from the great outdoors. The good news is that by taking even the smallest steps, like reading a book on our patio or taking a stroll around the local park, even worshiping outside once in a while, we can improve our body, mind, heart, and soul. Also, whether we're the outdoorsy type or not, nature has a lot to teach us about pursuing our greatest life, outside or otherwise. I know for me, when I'm stuck on a sermon or some project I'm working on, I head out and take a walk around my neighborhood. I don't put my AirPods in my ear to listen to a book or music, and I turn off the ringer on my phone. And as I walk, I allow nature to speak to me. I allow my mind to be cleared and to seek to see things that I might not when just taking a walk. I might watch the ducks in our pond or the majestic gray heron trying to catch a fish. Sometimes I watch the playfulness of a squirrel or the slow pace of a turtle. I love to take in the cloud formations, the changing leaves, and even how the wind blows through the trees. Different perspectives inspire me, offer me new opportunities, and even introduce me to new possibilities. Often after my walk, I can come back to my work with a new clarity and purpose. Also during the summer, we learn that what we choose to do on our off time or our vacation and what we think about while on holidays indicates what we are passionate about in life. It often takes getting out of the routine of our lives and the spaces we frequent to see the experience, see and experience new perspectives. This is why as a family, Sue, me and the boys have always loved road trips, short weekend ones or long vacation road trips. When the stress of life, school, ministry, and teaching would get the best of us, Sue would often say, I think we need to get out of town. In Oregon, we lived about an hour from the coast. Often after church, we would drive to the coast simply to walk the beach and watch the sunset before heading into a new week. I think that is one thing we miss the most from our time in Oregon. But we do similar things here when our weeks get stressful. For me, I like to take a break during my week and head out here into our meditational woods. I love to sit here and listen to the waterfall, the rustling of the trees, watch all the wildlife. And on the weekends, Sue will research a place for us to go take a walk. This past week, we drove to Zionsville to Starkey Nature Park and took a two mile walk through the beautiful woods and along the river. Nature or the wilderness clears our minds, gets us off our phones and reconnects us with our breathing and listening. And it also encourages us to remember our purpose and rejuvenate our passions. What I found is that when we are relaxed in new surroundings or observing life from a different perspective, we find that many of our interests and dreams easily surface. Some of Sue and my best conversations, decisions, even plans have come during road trips or walks in nature. Well, a few months ago, Eric Baker started a group that does walk and talk meetups. They take walks in green spaces specifically to dialogue and discuss current issues. There's a beautiful connection to nature and working through our struggles. All this kind of reminds me of things we see happening in the Bible. Take for example, the biblical character of Moses. He had a passion for helping the suffering Hebrew people. But to accomplish his passions, he first had to spend time in the desert where God would get him ready to go to their rescue. God thought Moses needed a different perspective to be the most effective. As well, the Spirit led Jesus into the wilderness, where he was challenged to hone his passions and establish his purposes. And when he came out of the wilderness, he began preaching and teaching a message of hope. This morning, we are out here in nature, and we're getting a different perspective just by being out here. We started last week in looking at our why or icky guy, and this week I want to challenge us to take some more time in doing what is called passion prioritizing. Beliefnet.com offered the following exercise that has helped me, and I would like to share it with you this morning. 
Beliefnet.com believes the end of summer is the perfect time to get our passions in order. Warm weather makes us either wilt in the heat or chase after every dream we have ever had because the back to business seriousness of fall and winter are coming. So here's the exercise. One, start by making a list of your current passions. One might be a hobby. One might be a relationship. One might be a dream. Two, next to each passion, write down whether or not you think you have to suffer for it. Are your fingers nicked from failed attempts to accomplish a perfectly Julian carrot? Does your, your significant other drive you crazy? Are you wrestling with the title for the short story you've been sweating over? Three, ask yourself if each passion is worth it. Looking at your list, are there any that no longer give you that spark of excitement, curiosity, drive, and life force that they once did? Passions that once consumed us might suddenly no longer rank, and that's okay. Letting go of an old passion can free you up for the new one. I'm curious to know what's left on your list and why you still endure your passions, or do you disagree with the notion of passion's inerrant connection with suffering? Are your passions more purely joyful than deliciously difficult? These are some good queries for us to ponder this morning. So as we head into waiting worship, take this time to gain a new perspective. If you're watching online, find some time today to get out in nature to gain a new perspective and clear your, your mind. Take this time to answer the queries I just posed and see what passions arise in your hearts and which you may want to let go. Let's take this time this morning.
We close this time of worship with a Quaker prayer. God, open our eyes and unstop our ears that we may see your light and may hear your heartbeat reflecting and resounding within our chests in those of all our neighbors near and far, in all creatures and plants and in the ground we walk upon. When we finally are able to yield to the leading of your rhythm and flow, may we come to walk cheerfully over the world, answering that of you in all. Amen. Have a great week, friends. <laughs>